Grandma Park sits at the table, waiting for her meal. She thinks about how high and knew she was coming, and that the food was already ready however, she feels a bit reluctant, thinking he will probably serve her pasta again. She admits to herself that she doesn't really like its flavor, and she questions her choice to visit the restaurant. However, the smell of the food drifts through the air, catching her attention. Hein brings out the pasta, saying it is from his restaurant's special menu, which he calls Daily Pasta. She looks at the plate, wondering if Dailies are also in the States. As she gets ready to try the pasta, she thinks it might taste better this time, and she enjoys the spring greens Hein added to the dish. Grandma Park thinks back to a time when her husband was still alive. He once sat beneath a tree, and said that spring was in full bloom. He felt that more flowers had blossomed this year compared to last year. He gave her some flowers, in a playful way, asked if she was free to share a cup of tea together. However she then questioned why he was being so nice. Grandma Park looks at the flowers visible through Heinz restaurant windows, and realizes that it is spring again. She keeps eating the pasta and comments that it wasn't on the menu before. Hein admits that it wasn't and she wonders if he made it just for her. She is curious why he would go out of his way for her. He explains that he wanted to make a dish, she would like while also trying something new to improve his cooking skills. Hein understands that he can't rely only on rice cake to make his customers happy, which is why he wants to impress his first guest without needing rice cake its help. After finishing her meal, Grandma Park asks how much she owes him. Hyun is surprised that she ate everything and says that she doesn't need to pay. She replies, questioning what type of restaurant owner would let his guests eat for free. She insists that, because she liked her meal so much, she has to pay him for it. However, this makes you wonder if she really understands how things work. Although she enjoyed her meal, it seems a bit unfair to think she must compensate him. But that's just her opinion, right? She tells him not to underestimate the value of the food he makes, and she suggests that he add the dish to his menu, promising to come back. Hein smiles happily as she leaves. In the other world, he finds peace, he is happy to have pleased his first guest, and has finally opened his restaurant, all that's left is to take some time to heal. However, because rice cake causes a fuss if he doesn't visit the other realm, he decides to go there often for a break. While Hein enjoys his free time, Randolph suddenly shoots an arrow at a bird, but he misses and the bird almost crashes into Hein. Randolph says hello to Hyan, who is lying on the ground after falling from the mishap. Later, as they sit down, Hyan asks if Randolph is on duty. He answers that he's off and has come to hunt a little. Randolph then offers to treat Hyan to a meal, suggesting they go hunting together. Although Hyan first thinks he doesn't want to join, he eventually finds himself holding a bow and arrows. Randolph guides him and rice cake to a place known for its jumping birds. As he points out the birds, Hyan thinks they look like cotton candy and feels a twinge of regret about hurting such cute creatures. Randolph then explains that, although their feathers seem soft, the birds are actually a short, haired type. While the birds fight with each other, Hyan realizes that the cotton candy look is, in truth, compressed muscle. This realization fills him with fear and he wonders how he will catch the birds. However, Randolph is already chasing them and tells Hyan to help him from behind. Hyan focuses his mind and tries to shoot an arrow with calm precision, he aims for the bird. However, he barely misses and almost hits rice cake, who instantly feels betrayed. Later, Randolph cooks the bird's meat over a fire and asks Hyan if he can eat, as his hands shake uncontrollably. Hyan says he can handle it, but he worries about the meat's smell, thinking it would be rude to cover his nose. Randolph then gives him a piece of meat, and when Hyan takes a bite, he realizes that even someone who can't taste can tell when food is bad. Randolph notices Hyan's hesitation to eat the meat, trying to impress him, he brags about showing off his skills with the leftover beef. Although Hyan hesitates at first, he suddenly feels unsure remembering that he can't taste food, which makes him doubt his cooking skills. However he decides to change his mindset by showing off his abilities, telling Randolph to let him make something tasty with the meat. As Hein takes care of the meat, he thinks about how he tried to get rid of the nasty smell by pulling out as much blood as he could from the creek, however, the task usually takes half a day, so it was not enough, he gets rid of the bad smell with some beer and Randolph tries to step in. Yet, Hyan warns him to build a support for the pot before he gets more annoyed. Although Randolph puts together the structure, Hyan fills the pot with beer and water, adds other ingredients and simmers the meat for an hour. Rice Cake, who had run away to avoid Randolph's meat, comes back, attracted by the delicious smell of Hyan's dish. When Hyan lifts the lid off the pot, the lovely scent drifts toward Randolph and Rice Cake, who are ready to eat. However, Hyan says that he needs to roast it one last time. He explains that he would have liked to put it in an oven, but one of the best parts of camping is roasting the meat over an open fire, because this brings everyone together. Hyan carefully cuts the meat into small pieces and serves it to Randolph, who is still unsure if the tasty smell really comes from the jumping bird meat. He thinks that even the best chefs in the area have given up on trying to make this meat into something good. When he takes his first bite, he is surprised by the flavor however, he keeps eating, telling himself that the outside of the meat is as crispy as a cookie. But at the same time, the meat's chewiness remains, while the insides are soft and juicy. 
he wonders if it is really the same jumping bird meat he has always eaten, feeling like something is missing from the meal, because it doesn't taste quite right. There must be a way to create a perfect balance with the dish. Suddenly, he remembers the beer and tells Hyan to get him a can. As he drinks the beer and enjoys the meat, he praises Hyan, saying it's the best side dish for beer, and he doesn't think he will ever get tired of it. Hyan says that it is not totally unpleasant, however, he could have gotten rid of the smell completely. There is a reason for the long time it takes to get rid of the blood. He also mentions that they might have let it sit for a little longer. This makes him think about how important it is to bring some laurel leaves just in case. Although Randolph might be surprised by Heinz's unhappiness, even after making such an impressive meal, he thinks that Heinz's cooking skills could be better than those of the royal chefs in the capital. He is left wondering who Hein really is, and what he can do. As they keep eating the meat, Randolph shares his wish to treat Hein to a meal however, he accidentally ends up being treated by Hein again. Because of this, he thinks he can never enjoy a regular jumping bird meal after having such a wonderful feast. Randolph asks if he can copy Hein's cooking techniques, but Hein replies without much interest, claiming that his methods are nothing special. Although this is true, Randolph argues that, because he knows several chefs, he really understands the true value of Hein's cooking skills. He insists that Hein's dishes are amazing, pushing him to stop downplaying his own talents. Hein responds that he is getting similar compliments often and he thanks Randolph. Then, Randolph says he wants to repay Hyan with something great, he will teach him swordsmanship. Although Hyan looks at him in disbelief, Randolph goes on, saying that he might be living in the countryside right now. However, he used to have a good reputation in the capital. His swordsmanship, he claims, should be seen as a fair trade for the meal. Hyan, who calls himself a chef, suggests that Randolph should just teach those a people who want his instruction instead of teaching him. However, this might be difficult for Randolph, because he has his own style. Although teaching others can be rewarding, it could also take a lot of time and effort. But, in the end helping others learn might be worth it. Randolph shows he doesn't like the whole group, this means that whenever their paths cross again, he plans to teach Hein about swordsmanship. In return Hein can make a side dish and some beer for Randolph. He thinks Randolph might feel embarrassed about being treated unfairly over and over however, he doesn't mind sharing both his knowledge and beer with him. Although this is true, Randolph might still feel a bit uncomfortable. Hein eventually decides to see the situation as a workout because it could help strengthen his arms, which is important for using heavy wokes properly. The week after opening the restaurant, Hein thinks about the large number of villagers who have visited during that time. He wonders to himself that he first thought there would be no customers, and he definitely wasn't expecting any. Looking at Rice Cake, who is just watching TV, he sits down with him. Only to find out Rice Cake is really into a show about Yu and Azi, a group of female idol stars. Hein remembers their name from somewhere, but he can't quite remember exactly where he heard it before. In the meantime, Yoon Siap is with the Yunizi group and he asks about the progress of their work. They all express dissatisfaction about the area and other challenges, which makes Yoon Siap feel quite exhausted. He concludes that, because there is nothing planned after the shoots for their show, he should visit Hein, who is nearby. After he contacts Hein to see if he can come over for a meal, the girls watch him with curiosity, wondering who he is talking to. Once he ends the call, he leaves, leaving the girls under his assistant's supervision. He tells them to be nice to his assistant, and they all smile, asking when they have ever been anything but nice and obedient. Yunsap knows that the girls can be troublesome, however, he decides to leave without saying more. As he goes out, his assistant tells the girls they should head home, but they insist he follow Yunsap. He refuses their request and one girl smiles at him, saying that asking for forgiveness is often easier than seeking permission. Meanwhile Hyun is cleaning up the restaurant and grumbling that Yoon Siap should have given him a heads up before planning his visit, because he might have been busy. He decides to make a meal for himself, however, just then, Yoon Siap walks in, scolding his assistant who looks pretty flustered about how the only cars on the road are theirs. Because a notices that they are following him, Hyun watches as the assistant apologizes to Yoon Siap and the girls induce themselves as UNIZ, although they seem a bit nervous, as the girls pet rice cake Hyun observes. He reasons that his modest restaurant in the most remote village has attracted the attention of idols. Yunsiup notes that the girls have become more courageous than they were at first. Not even thinking about the potential consequences. Yunsiup believes they should head home however. Hyun feels compassion for the assistant, suggesting it would be better for them to return with their stomachs full, especially because they are already there. Yunsiup is taken aback, considering that the Hyun he once knew would have created a significant uproar over such a situation. He watches as Hyun asks about the girl's culinary preferences and reflects on how he initially thought Hyun was angry when he moved to the countryside for healing. Although this, Hyun has transformed and now even has a pet dog. Hyun finds himself in the kitchen, thinking about what the girls might like, as he really wants to make something tasty for them. He grabs the ingredients he has and decides to whip up a light meal eh, although he wants it to be filling. While he carefully prepares the dish, 
he thinks about how important it is to create something that is both fun to eat and packed with nutrients and flavor. When he serves the meal, he mentions that he has made tomato pasta and steak salad. The girls look impressed and start to dig into the food right away. As they enjoy each bite, they share their compliments through different comments, which makes Hyun tell Yoonseop to let them eat in peace, pointing out that he specifically made a light meal. However, Yoonseop replies that he didn't mean to interrupt their fun. They both watch as the girls excitedly rave about how great the meal is, causing Hyun to ask Yoonseop if he had been ignoring their meals before this. Hyun tells Yoonseop that he should eat, because he has made Vongol pasta for him, since he will be driving back to Seoul. Yoonseop wonders if Hyun is really being nice. He asks if Hyun is dealing with a serious illness, to which Hyun replies by asking if he looks sick. The girls, ready to leave after enjoying the meal, keep praising it, while Hyun promises to make something even better next time they visit. They, in turn say they will come back and sweetly call him Chef Kang Hyun before getting on their bus. Hyun is surprised by their recognition and Yoonseop explains that the girls often watch his show when they feel hungry, it would have been stranger if they didn't know who he was. Later, Yoonseop gets into his car to go and Hyun asks him to let him know ahead of time the next time he wants to visit. Yoonseop then checks on how Hyun is healing, and he says that it is going quite well. Hyun rides his bicycle with rice cake to visit a supermarket, he thinks that the store where he bought spring greens before is the closest to him. However, the other supermarkets are located in bigger towns. When he arrives at the supermarket, he hopes to find some spring greens. As he goes inside, he meets a new cashier and wonders if she could be the daughter-in-law of the grandmother he met last time. The lady asks if he is looking for anything special, to which he replies that he will just look around himself. While walking down the aisles, he realizes that they don't have any dalalis, which he needs for a pasta dish for Grandma Park. She tells him that they only have a small amount of spring greens, making him think that he has to go to the town to get what he needs. As he leaves, promising to come back later, he hears some kids fighting. When he turns to see what's going on, he spots a little girl and a boy pulling at each other's hair, arguing that they will never play together again. The boy tells the girl she seems different from the others, suggesting she should go back to her country. This makes the girl very sad however, just before she can say anything, Hein jumps in, saying that once you say something out loud you can't take it back. He asks the boy if he's sure he won't regret what he said later. The little boy just looks at him without saying anything. Meanwhile, the cashier at the supermarket comes out, and it turns out she's the mother of the little girl named Myung. As Myung runs to her mom, the boy quickly leaves and Myung's mom thanks Hyun for helping. He modestly says he didn't do much, but she keeps thanking him. He then asks how Myung is doing and she says Myung has fallen asleep. She admits it's all because of what she did however, Hyun is surprised by this. He points out it was just a small fight between kids and it's not her fault. He also mentions her name is Engen, that she comes from Vietnam and that she worries Myung might be bullied because of her. Myung tells Kang Hyung that she thinks Myung is being bullied because of her situation. Kang Hyung feels like he should comfort her, however, he finds it hard to express his feelings after seeing the fight among the kids, thinking it might not be right for him to step in. Ungan knows who Kang Hyung is, as she found out he runs a restaurant in the village, and she asks if he would teach her how to make Korean food. This request comes up because Myung wants to celebrate her birthday with her friends, but she only knows how to cook Vietnamese dishes. Kang Hyung agrees to help, but he starts to wonder why Ungan asked him for help. While looking at some white rice cakes, he realizes that asking for help when you need it is a good thing. So, he decides to help and starts talking to a trustworthy person who knows a lot about the villagers. Kang Hyung arrives at Sujin's house, and finds the village chief already there, who quickly confronts him for not asking for help. Kang Hyung explains that he has been thinking about which dish to teach Ungan for her birthday party. While talking, Kang Hyung realizes that the village only has one school, with just one combined class. This discovery pushes him to come up with a plan for teaching Ungan a dish that she can easily understand. Sujin feels sorry for Myung, hoping that her child won't go through the same struggles that Myung does. The village chief suggests that Kang Hung teach Ungan how to make a Vietnamese dish. He says that the pressure to fit in can really hurt Myung, especially because she has a hard time accepting their differences. The adults must show that being different is not bad or wrong however, this is where Kang Hung's role is very important. While Kang Hung helps Ungan with the dishes, she thinks about whether the children will like the food. After all, Korean and Vietnamese cuisines are really different. This makes her question her choices however, she comforts herself that it will be fine as long as Kang Hung supports her. Ungan presents the final dish, Bian Cha, which is one of Vietnam's signature foods. It is known for having vegetables, meat and noodles that are dipped in Nua Cam sauce. Kang Hung, using rice cakes to distract her, tells Ungan that the food is amazing after asking for a glass of water. He suggests some changes to the dish and encourages him to make it for the party coming up. On his way home, Lyung gives Kang Hyung a birthday invitation, urging him to come, although she is unsure if any of the children will show up, especially because she recently had a fight with Chumin, 
who is really popular. On the day of the party, Mai Young feels nervous about how many people will come and is fascinated by her mom's traditional dress from her homeland. She asks about getting one for herself and her mom agrees. To her surprise, Mai Young is shocked to see Chelman at the door, this is unexpected. However, she quickly tries to hide her feelings. Although she isn't sure what to say, she feels a mix of excitement and nervousness. Chelman looks a bit different, but it's still him. This moment is important because it could change everything. Chelman says sorry to Miyoung, who nicely forgives him and gives him a birthday invitation. This act makes the other kids, who had been hiding, joyfully come out with their own invitation cards. The excitement among the children is really strong, especially since it's their first time experiencing these tasty dishes. Ingen decides to show the kids the right way to eat bun chow with the sauce whenever they need help. Her children enjoy the yummy bun cha and give enthusiastic compliments, which makes Miju think again about her future husband's love for dumplings. When the kids ask more questions, Myung proudly shows her dress, explaining that both the dress and the food come from her mom's country home in Vietnam. This revelation makes Miju recon future husband's clothing choices. Kang Hyung tells Ungan he will take care of the cooking. However, when Myung says she wants to show off their matching outfits to her friends, she happily pulls her mom over and this leads to a chorus of compliments about how beautiful the clothes are. A beastman, a big humanoid cat, tells Mona's mom, who leads the beastman village, about her daughter's many adventures. She tells the beastman to call Kang Hong, because Mona feels a responsibility towards him however, as her mom, it's important that she gets to know him. When the beastman says Mona is with Kang Hong, her curiosity grows. In a different place Rice Cake reacts strongly when she sees the shrimp, making Kang Hyung wonder why she is so scared of these tiny dead creatures. He thinks it could be because she has never seen them outside the salty water. After he sees rice cake a serious request, Kang Hyung decides to make a dish with the shrimp. Soon, Mona comes over and Kang Hyung offers her some, saying she can eat if she's hungry, which means he is feeding both her and rice cake. Their excitement grows after they try the tasty shrimp and this makes Kang Young feel satisfied. However, just as Mona asks for another serving, the beastman enters and Kang Hyung instantly sees him as the person who previously took Mona away. He urgently tells the beastman to let Mona finish her shrimp before whisking her back to the village. But he is shocked when the beastman says that he is there for Kang Hung himself. This is unexpected, because Kang Hung thought the beastman only wanted Mona. 